right, this is JT. Try and keep up. It is April 23rd. We got it right? Yeah. Okay. Now I have somebody here that we know and love, and obviously we're a few sessions into this, so i got to learn to drop my voice a little bit. I still recognize after recording I talk too loud, but I have the man who has the voice for the XDA and many other series, Fabian Brown. How you doing today, sir? Good. Thank you for having me. Uh, just glad to be here to get the season started. So, yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, we all know you as the talk man, but let's go back a little bit. What got you into all this? Well, my dad brought me uh, to Maryland National Raceway, my first race. I was like four or five. It was a pro stock race. And actually, I remember meeting Royce that night, and I said I was going to work for him one day. And he said, okay, five-year-old kid. Okay, cool. And then I got interviewed by Jason 13 years later in 05. And Royce walks in the room, looks at me, and says, wait a minute. And he remembers, and who thought 17 years of my 17th year here at MDIR, and uh, it's, it's been a blessing to do what I get to do for the last 17 years. Now, I've got to obviously go to many different series all across the United States. You're one of the best. Thank and you. I'm not just blowing smoke because he's sitting in front of me. He is. Because uh, I know the common term people like to use is gift for gab, so, so to speak. Um, how did you, from that to where you are now, when you're listening to yourself, say, okay, I could have done that better, okay? Um, when do you evaluate that, or what, has, what was the biggest change for you? You said, okay, I need to change and go this route to make you as good at what you do, if that makes sense. Well, it's just something that kind of like every, something you can just do in everyday life, you kind of just, okay, you evaluate yourself, okay, what can I do to make yourself better? Because it's like, kind of like Matthew McConaughey said years ago, and when he won an Oscar, He's like, ask who his hero is, and his hero's like always five, ten years ahead of him. Yep, so you're never going to, he's like, I know I'm not going to catch him, but he keeps him some, gets him something to keep on chasing, so I'm thinking, okay, after every race, I'm like, okay, what can I have done better? There are times where maybe before the next paragraph in the race, I'm like, oh, I can say that a little different, but it's kind of one of those self-evaluation things where like, you know that you're never going to be perfect. There's, every announcer strives for that perfect race. We know we're not going to get there, but if we keep on trying at it, like I said, it keeps us something to give on chasing. Okay. So. Now, this isn't a favoritism question. Okay. This is because me and you, we're, we're not racers. Right. And we're not upper management, so right. to speak. We're kind of in the middle, so we get to hear a little bit of everything. Now, from your standpoint as an announcer, and you look back, and I'm gonna, and again, this is in a pre-question, so he doesn't know what I'm about to ask him. So, right? when you look back at the events, it can be XDA or any other road. Right. What what event sticks out for you as an announcer that oh crap that just happened? So. It, I would have to say it was uh, it would be the NHRA national event in Atlanta. Uh, 2019, when I got to interview John Force at the at the end of the uh, shutdown, and he had just blown it up Q1, and I'm standing there next to him, and I'm like, "It's John Force," and the microphone <laughs> is shake, literally shaking in my hand, and he looks at me and he says, "I don't recognize you. Are you new?" I said, "Yes, sir." He's like, "Call me John. You're doing a good job, son." And then they throw it to me, and I and I interview him. And he's like, and he starts talking about Arby's because Arby's was sponsored the event, and he had just been to Arby's across the street a couple hours earlier. So I'm like. <laughs> Oh crap! I just interviewed John Force, and I was like, "That was like, wow! I cannot believe I just did that." I mean, I know so many people are going to envy envy me for that. I'm like, "Wow! I just interviewed John Force," and I was like, "Wow! I cannot He's, believe I did that." And he really is. I mean, we we have the um, we've obviously seen over the years. I'm, I made some cartoons of John Force as well, right. and obviously we have the beeping moments when you put him on TV that you have to beep him because he's yeah. very passionate. Yeah. Um, I had the honors of running into him um, at the Gator Nationals. And ironically, it was 19, but at the beginning of 19. Right. So, and I'm waiting on Pro Stock Motorcycle to come up because that's helping Andy. And he come up on his scooter because his daughter was running. And uh, he paused for a second, and I asked him, I said, sir, can I take your picture? So, and he goes, he looked at me for a second. He goes, yeah, absolutely. So he sits up on the scooter. I take his picture. He goes, people don't normally ask me. Thank you. And then he takes off, but he generally is a nice guy. Oh, he really is. I mean, he's just like one of I mean, yeah, he is – Arguably the greatest driver to ever go down the quarter mile or a thousand foot in this area now, but he's just like, I think that crash he had, I want to say it was 07 in Dallas, I think that really changed his mindset about a lot of things. I mean, not that he, I mean, he had the great outset before, mindset before, but I think that crash in 07 really got him thinking. Like I said, he's definitely like one of the most humble drivers I've ever met, and like I said, 150 some national event wins, records, obviously greatest driver ever. But it's like he just, he actually taught me something that day. It was like, just always remain humble because it could be gone in an instant. So yeah. I'm thinking, so 
I'm thinking just definitely make sure I keep that mindset because it, it can all be gone like, so, like that. Now you have your own style, just mm. like we all try to do our own things when we can. But when you're either early on or even now, what announcer, it can be from any kind of sports, right. helped influence you and help you build the way you do your, your style? Um, I, I got a list of five of them. Uh, the late great Stuart Scott from ESPN was one. Uh, just how he was about he had his own style. He did it his way. So he was one of them. Uh, obviously, Steve Evans, when he was with NHRA before he passed in 2000. Uh, there's all, you know, there's Bob Fry, just how he was the number. I was like, how do you come up with the numbers? I'm like, that was, that was a Bob Fry thing. I mean, that's just how he was. He knew everything. And obviously, Lewis Bloom, who called races here at Maryland National Raceway for many, many years. So him, and then also another one, I would have to say, uh, just uh, from, I think he's with NBC now, uh, Mike Tarico. Just how, like, how he was and the articulation, that sort of thing, knowing that, okay, I don't have to sound like a Harvard grad, but if I just make sure I do not say my words, take my time, and it's just like those group of guys really I look, I look up to as um, inspirations that kind of help me. Okay, I mean, I may not say as cool as the other side of the pillow, but it's one of those I kind of my own catchphrase like, upset, upset, are you kidding me? <laughs> but it's, um, I mean, it was those guys that I look up to and say, you know, that's where I got the uh, – the, the inspiration from. Okay, so now, just to be a little ridiculous for the thing, mm -hmm. so we don't expect you to start doing like when you're watching Latino soccer and them guys go crazy. Right. <laughs> and start <laughs> screaming. Okay. Yeah. We won't hear that from Fabian. Obviously, <laughs> I'm joking. But um, you do a fantastic job. Thank you. We've heard tons of announcers um, over the years. I've, I personally haven't been doing it as long as some, but over 10 years now. Right. And uh, you're you're one of the best. Thank you. Definitely. Thank and, you. Uh, we're fortunate to have you. And I know things are going to get busy here, so that's why we grabbed them this morning. Uh, it is a test day, but still, he's a busy man. So, um, what other what other rate events did you go into this year? Do you have anything set outside um, of the XDA? Well, I mean, obviously, have the regular stuff here at Maryland International Raceway. There's also like the pro media events, like NMRA, NMCA. Um, I did Texas 2K back in Houston back in March. We did everything in Houston in March, Texas 2K, because Jason Miller does a track prep for it. Uh, okay. Chris runs the tower. That's one of those events I look forward to every year. And just basically every event that I do, whether it be a test new, whatever, it's like a dream event, because this is something I've wanted to do since I was a kid. And the fact that I've gotten to do it for 17 years is like every event is like the big one for me. It's every one. Outstanding. So, all right, we're going to let him get back to work, but thank you for your time today. Thank you. And we thank have Fabian me. Brown, one of the best announcers on the planet. I got him here with us, and I'm sure we're going to talk to him again as the season moves on. All right. Thank you, JT. Thank you. All right.